Listen, guys. Let's see how cold this is. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know you it's don't have a pro- you're not an alcoholic is because you t- you care about the temperature and the taste. I th- I feel like mm. every other alcoholic just drinks to consume large amounts and they don't care what the fuck it is or what it tastes like. Yeah. yeah. And I know some alcoholics. I'm not going to name anybody. I'm not even going to allude to anybody. But, but there's some dangers out there. That, you know, there are some couple of guys out there that have to stop. But it's so hard to... What do you say? I wish, you know, I, I you wish say? there was a... Um, <clears throat> I'll tell you from my perspective. I, I mean, I've talked... I haven't really talked about this totally, but I think everyone knows it. But like I did rogan's podcast and we were talking about how much we drank and uh they were asking me Ari and tom and joe were asking me and they asked me how much i drank on a daily basis and at the time it was a high number and i i remember not wanting to say the real number but i don't know how to represent myself in that way like only because I've well, been, that's I've interesting ju- i've just been honest yeah and i know they're my friends and i know that they care about me and i, I know that and I know that people listen. I know that that's the thing about podcasting is you want honesty. Mm-hmm. That Chuck Chuck story is like, like that's like that's honesty, you know? Like, yeah. And I told them, and the second I told them, I was like, I regret this immediately. And then, yeah, I woke up the next morning going like, I fucked up my career. Like, no one will ever be able to come watch me because they'll think that it's sad that I drink. And no, like, it'll be, no. And uh, and then we did that sober October Bert thing, and it was awesome. It was really great, and it kind of restructured the way I drank a little bit. Yeah. And I mean, I still have my nights where I go off the fucking rails, but for the most part, I remember, I remember saying out loud to people, because I was drinking a ridiculous amount at the time, um, but not bad, not like violent, not angry, just drinking and going to sleep. I remember saying to people going, if you have a friend who you think drinks too much, make it into a challenge that changes their lives. Like say, we're all not going to drink for October Uh, or we're all not going to drink for November. We're all going to do it. No drugs. Find your weaknesses. We're not going to do it and make it fun and don't make it blamey and don't make it like accusatory, like an intervention, make it enjoyable because those three guys literally probably changed my life for the better in that I didn't drink all of October. I did mm. hot yoga, and I, I by the hot way, yoga. I did hot yoga fifteen times. Yeah, but morning. I feel like a real alcoholic though wouldn't be able to do it. I agree. I agree. Cause, but I mean, because the people that are in that challenge, right? Who was in that challenge? Me, Tom, Ari, and Joe. Tom, who? Segura. Okay. Ar- Ari Shafir. Yep. Joe Rogan. Yeah. Correct. <clears throat> yeah. I none of you guys are drug addicts. Well, alcoholics. yeah, but Joe is smoking weed. I know, but he is not one. No, but I know, but even I think I, not to speak for Joe. I would never yeah. do that. But Joe said that it was really interesting to not smoke weed for a month because what happens is you get into a you get into a rhythm in life. For my, for me, my rhythm was I have a hard time going to sleep. So for me, a couple drinks puts me to sleep. I don't sleep great, but that whole month taught me that I can totally go to sleep without drinking. Uh, I do not need to drink to go to sleep. I'm a grown up. I can definitely. I'm not gonna have nightmares. I'm not gonna. Be, I don't need a half a Xanax. I can totally sleep without drinking. Wow. So for a whole month, I didn't drink. I didn't. I, ba- I barely drank coffee. I barely drank coffee. Oh. Wow. Like it was really enjoyable. I didn't lose any weight. Like it wasn't like a game changer. But I think that's the approach. If you have a friend who drinks too much and you're worried about him, try the angle of like. Hey, we're all in this together. Let's make this a month long challenge. Because for me, and I was definitely drinking a lot, way too much then. I I enjoyed that month a lot, and I I it crept over into February, into March, yeah. all of March practically. Yeah, like where I just went. I'm home. I'm not drinking. Like I'm I'm gonna be home. I want to be with the girls. I want to just be home. And I didn't drink for four weeks in the, the all of March. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know. That's the way I look mm-hmm. at it. Where I think people look at too much of a pointy finger thing, but right, I don't but know. that solidarity I think is the proper kind of support. It was like, a, yeah, it was legit support. Like it was mm-hmm. legit fun support. Like I'd run to those guys at the store and and they'd be like, uh, "You look good." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was fun. We go to hot yoga together, the four of us. Oh my! And God. we just bust balls and laugh hysterically. And then you'd go home and you wouldn't want to drink. You would never want to go get drunk after you just hang out with your friends for two hours so i don't know i don't know anything about recovery or anything so that's my two cents well you don't need to know and i'm going to say this about you also as well if if i may that i believe that human beings there are 20 prototypes males 
20 they're female 20 female prototypes 20 males I love basically what i'm talk. saying is is that is that if we were androids if we were let's say we were an android company we made androids right mm -hmm. like a working class android company models. we have 20 models i like this now you talk. can manipulate the, the each model right the way you want mm -hmm. you want one model a little fatter mm -hmm. a little shorter yeah but generally the type i feel like you and i are the same model I agree with that. Thank you. Dude, can I tell you when I agree with that the most? <laughs> yeah, yeah. When the, I, I hope you're cool talking about this, but when the Carlos Mencia video came out. Oh, my and God. And the next day you gave the talk holding a cigarette. Oh, my God. I was like, I was like I'm that guy. <laughs> <laughs> can I just say this? I Man, I've never identified with anyone more. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. Dude, Video, the wow. thing you did, the way you talked about it, the way you expressed regret, and the, it was such in the vein that I live my life where yeah. I went, I went, oh my God. Dude, I, I, can I tell you, I've pictured where you were in life, meaning like location. I was like, oh, he's in Los Feliz. Yeah. He's, on, he's out by his back step. The, gar <laughs> the, the garbage <laughs> is right by that door. Like I visualized that Oh place. my God. It's, I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah. Because that video plagued me. For real? Yeah, because this is how that happened. So I, Joe puts out that montage video of Mencia stealing and whatnot, and I was oh, in the I video. I visualized, I visualized how it happened to you. Can I, can I tell you what I thought happened first? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna tell you, yeah, okay. I thought you walked up to the store, and I think, hey guys, what's going on? Yeah. Someone's like, uh, Bobby, you got a cigarette? You're like, oh, yeah, 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 I'm gonna smoke one too. And you lit a cigarette, and someone's like, and then, then everyone starts walking out, and yeah. you're sitting there by the wall, and they're like, "Bobby, what do you think about uh, Carlos Mastilli?" And you, and you just jokingly went, "You mean Ned?" Not knowing what had happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, and then just walked away. And then all of a sudden, the video comes out, and Carlos called you and was like, "Bro, what the fuck?" Oh, he steals. Of course, very sim, very similar to that. I envision that so much because yeah. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> his yeah, whole yeah. life was consumed. Because so you, funny. you were a little bit of the, you were a little bit of the nail in the coffin. In the in the storytelling, you and yeah, Renazizi, oh my you and God. were a little bit of like the the this is oh my God. so wait tell me how it really so happened. this is hap what happened okay <laughs> so I'm at the comedy store and Brian Redband at the time wasn't Red Brian Redband of today mm. Brian Redband was Joe Rogan's guy his video autographer mm -hmm. his podcast guy yeah. everything. And Brian Redband would always have a camera just on, right? And so I'm walking at night, like I always do, and somebody asked me, what about Mencia stealing? I don't see the camera. Was this the same night that this whole thing went down? Or? No, they, it, was, it, was a, it was a collage of a bunch of different nights. Oh, so it was a different night. Right. Oh. So he got, and I said, I didn't know there was a camera there, and, he, and they said, but Mencia stealing? I go, yeah, he steals, or whatever, you know. Then I noticed the thing, and then I go to Brian, I go, don't put that out there. And Brian goes, no, I mean, Joe makes the final decision, but we're probably not. It's then they, it's, it is, right? Mm -hmm. So here's the fucked part. By the way, you gotta give a shout out to Brian Redman for shooting content <laughs> a week earlier, then shooting this, and then realizing, I got Bobby Lee saying that he steals. Mm -hmm. That's a good producer's mind. Like, <laughs> that's a really great, yeah, yeah. like, it's crafty. Yeah. That's, that's Brian Redband's a gangster. He should, I wish he just started a production company where he made vlogs for comics. Because he's, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. he's so good at, he's so good in so many, many art, like, he's great at comedy, but his, his artistic arm is really in, in branding, in like, yeah. making content. He's so he, talented. He could have had an empire, though. I mean, he yeah, could don't have. Get me started about that because I, I he really could have been like all right. things comedy. I think you're right. You guys, what you guys right. are doing with us also, we're involved. Um, is <laughs> that you guys are creating a company that can last, and that can um, eventually produce things and get into the mainstream. And well, whatnot. we need we need one of us to. I want. I don't want to lose train of this story. Yeah, we need one of us who's big to decide not to go on Netflix and release their special on all things comedy's platform mm. and that will mm. not happen <laughs> i won't do it i definitely won't do it <laughs> yeah, I'm not yeah. The one. I'm, yeah i'm not the one i'm already but if I'm, all yeah. of you guys did it you bill burr ari you know tom maybe yeah i've never done a special i would do it on that how come you aren't doing specials i just don't uh, we'll talk about that <laughs> all right all right go back to the anyway so anyway go back to the thing yeah so that video comes out 
Now, I can do one or two things. Call Mencia and apologize profusely or avoid him, right? And I couldn't do the second option because Mad TV was attached to the mind of Mencia. We shared the same studio. Really? On Hollywood Center Studios. So you, they're, the you know, stage, whatever, are connected, <laughs> right? So I'm sitting in my dressing room and I get a knock on the door. Oh, wait, you shot that at Hollywood Center Studios? Yes. Of course you did. <laughs> yes. Of course you fucking yeah. did. And it was my first TV show shot there. Yeah. Of course you did. You now, now you can see the steps and the. And I the, see the steps yeah, and yeah, the back wall yeah, and, yeah, the, yeah. and the railing. Yeah, yeah. Of yeah. course you <laughs> yeah. fucking did. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> then it wasn't Ned, it was his cousins and his brothers. Hey, bro. The video is out, bro. I go, oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't do it. You know, I'm a I coward. Yeah. I'm a coward, right? It wasn't me. Oh, yeah, 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 me they, 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 I, I, I said, I said, not to put it on, and then they put it out. Yeah. Right? Like in that way. Well, you got to do a rebuttal, bro. <laughs> I go, but I don't want to. You, you have to, dude. Ned wants it. So Carlos comes. Ever, they put me on those stairs. Wait, did you call him, when you talked to him, did you call him Carlos or Ned? In Ned, life? Ned. In life? Oh, yeah, always. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, I, he started... I, he discovered me. Really? Yeah. Mencia was... The, without Mencia, I wouldn't have an agent or anything. I, I opened mm -hmm. for him for seven years. I, it's so funny. I just met him at Ralphie's memorial. Oh, wow. I, I, we had, uh, through Cowhead, we had talked. Me and Cow was like, oh, he might come to the show. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, I don't have any problem with him. Yeah. He never, I mean, I've never had any beef with him. I mean, I, obviously, I know the backstory of him. But like I don't, I don't. I've, I've never experienced a complex it story, but my experiences with Ned were of a boss employee. And when I was in 1997, when I didn't have a car, he goes, "Bro, come over to my house. I have a present for you." He bought me a car. I mean, that's the kind of relationship I had but with him. He also him. took you home with him to Honduras. Yeah, he took it? me to Honduras to visit his where his homeland is and really? his family. Yeah. And I lived in a village for a month. So my ties with him were really deep. Oh, wow. And so when that. that video came out, it was hurtful for, to me because yeah. I feel like I betrayed a friend. Mm -hmm. But what, was I, what, what I said, was that true? Yes. Yeah. So now I'm caught in a thing. Oh, dude! So then you're he's explaining, like, "You're explaining me and the Jay Moore." <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's me and that's yeah, me and Jay. Yeah. So then he goes, "Come on, do a video," and I, I was like, "I have to." So that's why when you see it, I'm like, you know, it was pensive and whatnot. But when that came out, if you read the comments when they came out, I saw them. Uh, it was brutal. Yeah, I know. I saw. Yeah. <laughs> So I definitely, you don't yeah, think, you, yeah, you think yeah. I was a young comic? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, you, didn't, you don't think I came out? Fuck, like, you're done in comedy, you rat, you piece of shit. I mean, it went, I mean, not There's just five thing. or ten. I'm talking thousands. There's a weird thing but in, in between having loyalty for somebody and then having loyalty to yourself. Like, like what I, like my words, what I say is true. Versus like a lie for this person, right? And it, that fucked me up bad. With Jay, yeah, because I was like, I was like, I wanted, I was, I was taught, I was, um, by the way, I, I was taught to protect him. <laughs> yeah. Like I was made sure, like working for somebody when you're their employee, and that's is very clear what that is. Yeah. There's no like, for all you that don't understand, like. There are guys like like, and I'll say Joe is like Ari was always his friend and and worked with him. Tom was his friend and worked with him. Joey was his friend and worked with him. If you work with Joe Tony, if you work with Joe, you work with Joe. Yeah, you go out to eat. Like, I I will say this I, I very candidly. Jay made it very clear to me one time that I worked for him, that I was his employee. Mm -hmm. And then then there becomes this like weird fucking loyalty where you're like. I don't want to fuck up the boss's job because that's my job. Like, it's not like it's we're weird. buddies. Because it's also... And, and we were buddies. We were buddies. Also, we show business is intertwined in it. So you're dealing with now dreams are in the, the fabric of the relationship. What's good for the company is good for me. Yes. And so... And and then you you do get lost in that. 
the one th- I gotta tell uh, you about it. It's, it's the ambiguous one thing, what you're saying. I don't want to know what it was. No, but no, no. I'll talk. I'll talk really uh, clearly about it. I don't. I have no problem sharing everything. Okay. So when I watched your video uh, with the Carlos thing, I then um, I identified with you because Jay was telling a story that happened to me. He was. Uh, you know about this, right? No. Tracy Morgan story. No. It's a great story. Tell me. As I'm not gonna tell you the story, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna do a bit. But, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. He was telling a story that happened to me, um, and he was saying it as if, if it happened to himself. And so I, uh, I found out about this. He told it on Opie and Anthony. He told it for the first time on Opie and Anthony. It was the first time I heard him say this happened to me. It, it killed me. It really killed me. By the way, I don't mean anything negative about Jay. I'm just telling you stuff that happened. Jay's come a very far away in his life from this moment I'm talking about right now, and, and I'm a very far way away from this. I'm not slandering Jay. I don't hope I hope you don't see this. I'm just telling you two stories of two guys who were friends and worked with each other. Yeah. Just like you and Carlos. Yes. So it's just sharing. And so with well, the first time I heard it, it broke my heart. That's it didn't it didn't I wasn't angry. I wasn't mad. I didn't feel betrayed. It broke my heart. I was like, oh, why would he do that that way? Yeah. And then and then um and then it it got bigger. It got much bigger, and it's kind of spiraled out. And then I, I talked about it on Rogan's podcast, very candidly, like we're talking right now, yeah. where you don't realize people are listening. Yeah, I talked about it on Rogan's podcast, and the same thing that happened to you with Carlos happened to me, but directly with Jay. Of wow. like, of like, don't, like, why would you do that? Like, it was it was really like a bizarre fucking reality. Yeah, and I th- I think Jay would admit this. It was a bizarre reality where like. He was panicky. He was losing his mind. I was, I was, I was doing what you did. We just were like, I'm being honest. Yeah. I don't know another way to be right now other right. than honest. And he, I, I, I can't say anything more of Jay's intent after that. Which yeah. We stopped being friends. Wow. And, uh, but at the same time, that boss, employee friendship is just unhealthy. Yeah. It's almost the reason I never brought anyone on the road with me because I was like, I don't want that shit. Yeah. I don't want you to ever feel like I'm your paycheck. I've had managers say to me, "Hey, man, my kids got to eat. You got to don't don't do." Th-. And I'm like, "What?" And I fire them immediately because I go, wow. "I can't have that." Like I want whatever I do on stage to be what I do on stage. But man, when that stuff with me and Jay happened, I looked back to that video you shot and the comments they <laughs> left. I'm I'm being dead serious, Bobby, and I hope this doesn't sound bad. It took years. It took literally years for I me to shake I remember how it. you smoked a cigarette. I can't believe it. I, I remember that And when so you vividly. brought it up like 20 minutes ago, it brought me back to it. Wow. Like it just like it rattled me into fucking consciousness. Because I, I knew, by the way, I apologize to both Jay and Car- Carlos for this episode. <laughs> That's the title. Of I don't. I don't mean. I don't yeah, mean. Yeah, I don't yeah, mean. Yeah. I don't mean any hate on either of them. Yeah. As a grown man, I realize that my words may affect the way people go to see their ticket sales, and yeah. I don't want that for them. I, I hope that you just enjoy la- laughter and you go in if that's your thing. Mm-hmm. Enjoy their shit. But I mean, but, I, but but I remember I remember watching you visibly shake with a cigarette and going like, he doesn't mean this. He's, he's, this is this is that Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is a, a hostage saying they're treating yeah. me good, mom. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, that's I, I remember that so vividly. Yeah, and I was I was I'll just say in a in a in a form of representation, I was asked to do what you did. Yeah, and I chose against it because of your video, not because of not anything other than I was like I don't. I know Bobby doesn't want to do this. Like I I fucking remember that so vividly, bro. But I would have never done it. If they weren't at my doorstep, they were like six guys, oh, bigger Hispanic guys, visibly kind of aggressively angry. Like they felt betrayal because I'm like, it's, it's very Shakespearean. I stabbed, you know, my master behind the back. Under By the way, let's, let's, so let's, let's, let's ballpark this from the other side. Yeah. Understandable to an extent because yeah, I remember I, I got into therapy right after the JME shit went down. My biggest mistake I ever did was telling Joey Diaz I was in therapy, and he was like, "Dog, fuck that shit. That guy's got a fucking mortgage. Yeah. You meet me every morning for 8 a.m. at coffee." <laughs> and me and Joey had an 8 a.m. coffee for a month. Wow. wow. One month every day, and he go talk, say everything you need to fucking say, and I would dump on him, dump on him, and then Joey would come back and be like, "Here's the problem, cocksucker." <laughs> you know. Like, yeah. But but uh, but I I I know that 
feeling. I know that fucking yeah. feeling of like going, did I betray my master? Yes. Did, I was being real. I was being honest and I was being real. 